As a leader, your job is not necessarily to be the know-it-all. Your job is to be the one that sort of corrals people and moves them in a certain direction. So Tomas, you've had 23 years of experience in information security, and now you're running the show at the NFL. So did you always see yourself as a leader? Would you say you were born one, or was it something that you had to develop? So it's a great question, Gabby. First of all, I didn't like the emphasis on the 23 years, <laughs> but I have been doing this a while. I'll say it's something that people saw in me, the leadership qualities and the leadership ability. I didn't necessarily see it in myself initially. Uh, and I'll, I'll point to a very early story in my, in my life where my high school principal, his name was Mr. Leader. And so he would walk around saying, hey, I've been a leader all my life. You need to be a leader as well. You know, be a leader, not a follower. And he kept saying that over and over again, different situations, different scenarios. And I, and I kept carrying that forward throughout my life. Uh, but you don't automatically become a leader, right? You have to develop that and cultivate those sort of skills. Well, you know, I'm sure Mr. Leader had uh, this quality, but, you know, what is one skill that you think all great leadership starts with? Starts with listening. You have to listen. If you don't listen to the people that, are, that have either put you in a position of leadership or that you're responsible and accountable for leading, then you're not doing your job. Because as a leader, your job is not necessarily to be the know-it-all. Your job is to be the one that sort of corrals people and moves them in a certain direction. Well, now, what is your opinion on what differentiates between good leadership and, and management? Well, I think management is very task-oriented, task-driven. So you're managing a project. You're managing a specific initiative versus a leader where they're, you know, they're really focused on listening to all the key players within that project or task and trying to figure out, do, we have, do I have the right makeup of individuals to make this project or task successful? So, you know, you usually see very early on when people become leaders for the first time, they, they were maybe first line executors and they moved into some level of management and now they're leading a team. You still see them focused on like the initiative and not so much the broader thinking around how do we actually get people to stay motivated? Do I have the right makeup of individuals? Is the team getting along? Do I need to move people in and out so that we can actually execute and implement what we're doing? Were there any specific moments in your career that affected the way you lead? There's certain aspects of leaders that can make or break you in your career, right? And, and the ones that have been really beneficial for me have been the ones that have listened and empathized and provided me the opportunity to grow. So they've seen things in me that I've never seen in myself. Uh, leaders that have not been really well, uh, good, if you will, are the ones that aren't listening. They're really more focused on themselves and their career and whether you're doing something that's going to help them get to their next step. You'll probably run across leaders like that in your career and you want to, you want to one, identify those people and run away from those people. Because a, a true leader is not focused on their next step. They're focused on the team's next step. How do we get the team to that next level? Are you using the Indeed mobile app? The app is free and makes it easy to apply right from your phone. Click the link below or just search Indeed in the App Store. It ties into the broader picture that you were saying, true leaders see the broader picture and they're not so focused. You have to, you, you have to, and that comes with time. That's not, a, you know, the question around whether you're born or you, or you can sort yeah. of learn it. That comes with time. That comes with time from you observing other good leaders, right? And it's easy to say good leader. Not everybody knows what a good leader is, but it's, the way I, I equate a good leader is somebody that, that you're willing to follow and what they're saying resonates with you and they're helping you get to your next level in your career. Well, you know, I know from our chats earlier that you're still growing as a leader yourself. So uh, what is your advice for nurturing those leadership skills? So you have to be willing to take feedback and feedback is both positive and negative. And I'd say focus a lot on trying to obtain negative feedback. Not because, you know, I want you to live a dark life and not do well, but because you're going to learn and grow a lot from that negative feedback. And, I, and I'll say not negative, that constructive feedback, right? Because if you're hearing too many people who say, hey, you're great. Hey, yes, you did this very well. You're not growing. If you hear people say, that was really awesome what you did. You can add a few tips here and there. Here are a few tips. That will help you grow and get to the next level. And I tie that into you want to be a continuous learner. If you're not learning, 
then I don't know what you're doing with yourself. <laughs> I, I, I really don't. Like you always want to be learning. You want to read books, right? We talked about that as well. You know, I, I have no shortage of different books that I like to read. And a lot of them are on leadership because again, I am still learning and I don't think I know every aspect of leadership, but I like to hear different opinions to help me grow. So I love this word that we're using, nurture, because leadership has to grow, and in order to grow, it has to be nurtured. So, you know, I'd like to go back to daily habits or things that people should implement in their lives in order to nurture that. I think one of the key things that I would say is whenever you're entering a situation as a leader, you want to try, you almost have to leave your agenda behind. Let's say we're in a, a work mm -hmm. setting and you have, your, you have your set of projects, I've got my set of projects, we're working on a specific initiative, and I've got my agenda, and I'm like, Gabby, we need to do this, that, and the third. What's your first reaction is gonna be like, hmm, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna be like, whoa, what's going on? He doesn't understand what's driving and motivating me to do what I need to do. So what I'll say is, go in, listen first, leave your agenda behind, figure out what's motivating and driving that other person that you're sitting with across the table, and identify a way to interweave your agenda into their objectives, because if it's a win-win for both of us, meaning you're gonna win career-wise because you're executing and still growing, and I'm gonna be able to, I will be able to get what I need out of you performance-wise, then we both won. So this is a great segue into this next question, but you know, what makes or breaks good leadership in terms of, you know, someone's ego or self-perception coming into a leadership role? Well, ego is probably the biggest thing that's going to break a, a leader, right? Because, so we all have egos. You don't, you don't become a leader if you don't have a little bit of an ego, right? And that ego, you have to keep it in check. And you also have to stay humble, right? Because putting you into that position wasn't your ego. Putting you into that position was because they, they saw certain aspects as to how you motivate and drive towards an initiative. So that could break good leaders if they get too much ego, and I'll call it not so much ego, power. I can decide whether to fire somebody or hire somebody. I can decide, I can decide whether to make an investment in a, in a solution. And so you have that little bit of power and that might go to some people's heads, right? So you have to stay humble. You have to, you have to stay humble, stay grounded, surround yourself with people that are give you honest feedback about your performance and about how you're leading them. Uh, and that'll keep, you, that'll keep you on the right path, I think. Well, how can you be an effective leader though when you're stressed out? You can't, it's impossible. I look to you to, to be that person that calms me, right? And if I see you stressed and frantic and running around like you don't know what you're doing or you're just not able to manage the crisis, then how is that able to calm me to help me achieve what I need to do? So it's not, very, it's not a very successful thing for leaders that are stressed out to try to lead other people. It's not gonna work. Uh, so you need to be able to manage that and you need to be, again, identify it, manage it, control it, mitigate that, and if you can't seek professional help, well, take time off. That's why we have vacation days. <laughs> right? You got PTO, sick days, vacation days. Take some time off. Mm, absolutely. Well, what leadership advice would you give your own 25-year-old self? So don't be in a hurry to be a leader. That's the first and foremost, because once you become a leader, you're not, your, your world changes. It's almost like you... It's almost like you're giving birth or something. I've never given birth. But it's almost <laughs> like you have children, right? And, and the reason why I say that is because you said nurturing. That's mm. exact, absolutely that's what you need to do as a leader. You need to nurture your talent, nurture, see people's career and see their journey and figure out what motivates them. Uh, you need to listen to them. And then you also need to focus in on how to, how to keep the team blended in a way that they mesh and that they can continue to move very quickly to be able to execute on your, on your deliverables. Because at the end of the day, a good leader is not gonna be a good leader if he can't execute on their deliverables. Thanks for watching. Did you find this video helpful? If so, please like and subscribe. And you know, this is the last and most important question of them all, but how about them Cowboys? How about them boys? <laughs> how about them? Well, I, I like all 32 teams equally. That's right, that's right. Uh, and the Cowboys, they have a phenomenal team. Yes, all right, <laughs> we'll, we'll put a bug in there.